ancient Ethiopian capital of Addis Ababa welcomes Queen Elizabeth. The British monarch is greeted by the Lion of Judah, Emperor Haile Selassie, on this royal occasion, the first formal visit by any British ruler. The capital city has been all spruced up. They even repaved the road from the airport, and people travel days from remote areas to cheer their visitors. The Queen rides in the imperial carriage, drawn by six white horses. During her eight-day stay, she doesn't get close enough to pet the palace lions, who are closely guarded and wear hobble collars during the royal visit. Africa Hall is the headquarters of the United Nations Mission to Africa and was a gift of the emperor, who traces his ancestry back to the Queen of Sheba. During the war, Haile Selassie spent years of exile in England when the Italians occupied his country. This, he says, has drawn him even closer to Britain. Tribesmen gather from afar to lend native glory to the festivities. These are the same fierce warriors who once faced modern Italian weapons of war, armed only with their spears, and won many a battle. Before leaving Ethiopia for the Sudan, the Queen is entertained by 60,000 schoolchildren in the modern stadium. Thus, the future generation provides a colorful climax for the Queen's visit to an ancient nation. It's one of the great sights of Ethiopia, indeed of the African continent, where the Blue Nile pours out of Lake Tana over the Tassissa Falls, performing a perpetual rainbow. To see it necessitated a trudge of a mile up a steep, dusty road, and both the Queen and the Emperor seemed to take it in their stride. It is one more example of the fact that everything worthwhile costs an effort. Never can a more perfect host have entertained royal visitors. Custom required some formality of dress despite the heat, but the superb view compensated for any discomfort. The Queen's program then took her to Gondar, a city once the capital of the country. As she and the Emperor arrived, the crowds almost got out of hand. Enthusiasm was as great here as in Addis Ababa. Priests of the Coptic Church were waiting to perform religious dances for the Queen. Ethiopia was providing a bewildering variety of experiences for her distinguished visitors. Gondar by air, the Queen and Duke went to the very ancient city of Axum. Its modern cathedral was built since the war. The first Christian church was erected in the 5th century. But long before the Christian era, the city itself was founded. It goes back more than 4,500 years. Tradition says that a son of Solomon brought here from Jerusalem the Ark of the Covenant. As with the old church, it had been forbidden for women to enter the cathedral. In the Queen's honor, Haile Selassie waved the banner. By his presence, the Emperor officially inaugurated the cathedral. Another tremendous reception awaited the Queen in Asmara, capital of the province of Eritrea. There is a strong secessionist movement in Eritrea, but there was no sign of it as the Emperor escorted the Queen into the city hall. It was a holiday, and a royal holiday at that.
Experienced traveller though the Queen is, she was taking, as she prepared to say goodbye to Ethiopia and the Emperor, a multitude of very happy and unforgettable memories.